Hey, I'm Mr. Terry, a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, in today's video, we're hitting up a channel that has been a channel favorite for a while. And I've been saying for about a year now that if you're not watching it, you are missing out on the best channel that you are not currently aware of. And that is Drawn of History. Now, they put up a new video, and the topic of this video is Marquis de Lafayette. So Lafayette um, was involved uh, is, uh, with all the American Revolution. He was French, helping out with the Americans. And it uh, looks like this is going to be a multi-part series here. So I'm excited to check this out. Again, Drawn of History, amazing channel. Also a friend of our channel. And I want to make sure I'm promoting uh, them. They're also selling some great merch, like the right side of history. Uh, they put out the shirt. It's hilarious because we all know top side makes you on the right side of history. But anyways, you can check that out over on their channel. Um, no paid sponsorship there. Just want to support uh, Drawn of History. All right. The original video link is down below. Make sure you give it the view, like, subscribe. New channel still. And they got to get that help. And by doing those things really helps the channel grow. All right. And with that, let's check this out. Looks like the episode one is called Lafayette, the French teen that made America, part one. All right, let's do this. Gentlemen, across that field are those British dogs and their German stooges who will take everything you hold dear. Will you let them take your honor, your freedom, your lives? No! That's what I thought. Now I'm just going to have Seven a years war, okay. see, yeah. see how many there are. Ah! Oh, fast. Yeah, so Gilbert, Daddy had a little accident on the battlefield and he won't oh, be sevens. coming home. And I guess that now makes you the new Marquis de Lafayette. I'm the Marquis de Lafayette. I'm the Marquis de Lafayette. Yeah. Oh. I love the, the child voice that he gets um, for this. The voices are great. I've, I've had the honor to um, voice some characters in some of the videos there. And I love the little kid that they have uh, in these videos. By the way, they were uh, just showed Seven Years' War um, between France and France and <coughs> many of their allies versus the English and many of their allies in a global war. Uh, back in the 1750s and the repercussions of the of that also helped influence the conditions by which the american war of independence is going to be fought over about 20 years later all of this is yours hmm can i have a deuce box sure did i miss that what do you say hmm can i have a deuce box deuce box <laughs> heck yeah hey i've been saying this for a long time when are there going to be adult-sized juice boxes? Okay, I'm not talking about wine cooler boxes and stuff like that. No, I want like a big old juice box. I'm, not, I'm talking like 20, 30 ounces. Okay, it could be a Capri Sun, the big old bag. Someone make that happen. I will buy them. Marie Joseph Paul Evero Gilbert de Mortier oh Marquet de Good Lafayette. Name. Or Gilbert to his friends. Born into a centuries-old French noble family, an odd thing happened while he was growing up. All of his immediate and... It's not going to be good to be a noble family. Uh, in, uh, what, about 40 years in France? Extended family members seem to die. Not saying he had anything to do with it. Just saying that you may not want to attend a young Lafayette's tea party. So by age 12, he was an orphan. But also incredibly rich. Enter Jean de Noailles, patriarch of one of France's wealthiest families you say the whole thing. and desperate to arrange marriages for his five daughters. See, they're great together. I don't know. Listen, we already pawned our oldest off to a royal, and this kid, he's a stinking rich orphan. Just think of how much we'll save on the dowry. Yeah, but... But what? But she's 12 and he's 14. Don't you think that's a little too Chris Hansen-y? If we're gonna arrange <laughs> this marriage, we won't tell them for two years, okay? The whole thing feels crazy. Oh, it's Chris hansen -y if it's a big age difference. They're both pretty young, which, again, is not great. <laughs> not very good. But if it was, like, 34-year-old and a 12-year-old, yeah, for sure. And that, that gap is obviously huge. But that's what you saw on some of those To Catch a Predator shows with Chris Hansen. Creepy enough already. All right, fine. 
Now excuse me a minute. Yeah, Jacques, old lady ain't feeling this. You best cancel the rest of our appointments for the day. <laughs> so, unaware of his impending nuptials, Lafayette was sent to live in one of Noir's many houses in Versailles, where he struggled to fit in with the Parisian aristocratic lifestyle. Even newly crowned teen queen Marie Antoinette noticed his awkwardness. Hey. Lafayette, you're so provincial. Versace. I bet your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. Oh. Your mother and father are dead, your majesty. Uh, oh, bring down the whole room, why don't you? Lafayette would marry Adrian at age 16 and his new father-in-law got him a cushy commission as a captain in the Noailles Dragoons. But to most of French noble society, he was just a weird orphaned millionaire. And what do weird orphaned millionaires do? They become Batman. <laughs> but who would Lafayette become Batman against? Through the Dragoons, Lafayette met Commander... The English. The English. Charles Francois de Broy, former member of the King's Secret Service. And de Broy invited Lafayette to become a Freemason. Freemason and attend their secret meetings, talk enlightenment theory, and engage in clandestine games. So all men have their natural right to property? That is, unless you accept this social contract as a necessary condition for those rights. And Will you guys did. shut up and open the door? Ha <laughs> ha! You got the dud! Hey, he looks just like you, Poindexter! Lafayette now had that enlightenment spirit and was ready to rage against the machine. But which machine? He found his target the. during a dinner party at De Bruyne's that included a very special guest. Wait, we got like Chick-fil-A, some escargot, and a pineapple. So, okay. Duke of Gloucester, what's your brother like? Who, King George the <laughs> Third? He's gonna run England straight into the ground. And the colonies, well, I'm sure you've heard about Lexington and Concord. He's always been a cock up. And I'll tell you what, he went to bed. Well, Lexington and Concord seen as the first battles of the American Revolution, 1775. We all used to have our accidents. Used to? This was last week! So Lafayette was now filled with progressive ideas and admiration for the American cause. Still, he would need one more thing to persuade him to go fight someone else's war. Minister Comte de Saint-Germain. Hmm. Marquis de Lafayette. Just so you know, I'm reforming the French military and eliminating nepotistic officer commissions, so, uh... You're fired. Yeah, that would do it. But how would Lafayette arrange to fight for American freedom? Enter Silas Dean. On the surface, this American diplomat was just visiting Notre France. Dame. But on the sly, he was tasked with finding four military engineers and securing some much-needed supplies. And in actuality, he, with the help of Baron Johann de Cobb, were recruiting Super pretty much every officer they could find. Free I have fought in the French and in the Anwar. Hey, water under the bridge. Here's a commission. I was a lieutenant Captain Crunch. in the Crunchberry War. Yo, I, I have Crunchberries right now in my, uh, I never buy them, but I did, and it's amazing timing. What a coincidence. You're a captain now, and you, what's your story? Well, I'm only 19, a little young, and I don't actually have any combat experience. You're not giving me much to work with here, kid. But you know, it's how they think that, uh, you know, you can get, you know, it's 19 years old, um, too, uh, too young to go to war, but not enough to be married by, for like already three years. But I am stupid rich, so I wouldn't need the salary. Fantastic! How's Major General Lafayette sound to you? But fearing that it, it might lead to war, Saint Germain forbid all French officers from joining the American fight, squashing Lafayette's dream of gaining military fame for an enlightened cause. Gilbert, are you okay? It's just like I feel I'm wasting away here in France. I have nothing. You realize I just had our daughter. You Go don't understand. <laughs> Nobody does. Where is he? You, Lafayette, what are you trying to do? Start another war with Britain and get my head on a pike with King Louis? Get this stupid American independent thing out of your head. Now, remember, France was devastated by uh, the Seven Years' War. They lost the war, lost territories. Um, incredible amount of debt, seeding the conditions for the French Revolution, which also happened a few decades after. Don't tell me what to do. You're not my real dad. Of course I'm not. What do I look like? My dog is playing in the background, so you know. Now listen, I've arranged a vacation for you in London to clear your mind. Ooh, that sounds lovely. Dear, you're staying here. How's a man supposed to clear his mind with a crying baby around? I'm not going. Yes, you are, and you're gonna like it. Lafayette reluctantly went to London. While there, he ran into the okay. British General Henry Clinton and was even presented to King 
King George the Third. The Marquis de Lafayette. <laughs> Your Majesty. What? Why are you laughing, Lafayette? <laughs> did my brother tell you something? No, Your Majesty. But Lafayette did have a secret. See, a royal decree had forbidden French ships from providing passage for right. French officers to the American colonies. Ah. And Lafayette had discovered an ingenious workaround. Dude. What if I just buy the freaking ship? And while in London, Lafayette received word that his newly purchased ship, La Victorie, was ready to sail. He was so excited that he even skipped out on a ball in his honor. <laughs> Traveling with De Cobb, he would have to lay low on his journey to meet the ship in Bordeaux. Okay. This is so exciting, De Cobb. We're finally doing it! Dude, be quiet. We can't get caught. King Louis issued another proclamation forbidding French soldiers from joining, and this one says, this I like? quote, <laughs> Notably, Monsieur Le Marquis de Lafayette. Well, that presents a bit of a problem. I kind of didn't tell Audrey that I'm going. How will I get word to her? Don't worry. I know how you can send this information without anyone intercepting it. Really? How? You could use a VPN. Um, where is the VPN sponsor? Yeah, um, we're not sponsored by any VPN. What? Everyone is sponsored by a VPN. What kind of channel <laughs> Even me. is this? Apparently not one big enough to be sponsored. Ugh, that's pretty We sad. gotta get him sponsors. Yeah. Oh, well, let's just go to America, I guess. People that have sponsored me, go, you want to get on the ground floor of a great channel? Go contact John of History. After a two-month voyage great in which Lafayette alternated between teaching himself English and becoming violently seasick, he arrived off the coast of South Carolina. Here we are, the Cobb, in America! Now, how do we get to Charleston so we can begin the fight for liberty and freedom? Beats me. We should probably ask those slaves. Oh, this is a confusing start to a fight for liberty yes. and freedom. In order to avoid British blockades, Lafayette decided to go overland from Charleston to the continental capital of Philadelphia. He bid adieu to La Victorie, and it promptly crashed into a sandbar and sank. <laughs> you did remember to get insurance on that, right? Rip. What is insurance? They set off by no. carriage, Didn't then exist. by horseback, and finally by <laughs> foot. They eventually arrived in Philly looking road hard and put away wet, and their reception Well, they're not able to sail up the Delaware. Oh, wait, I mean, they didn't sail the Delaware. They, they originally... When they took him to land up to the up the Delaware to Philadelphia. It's then welcoming. The Calb, are you sure this is the right place? Um, I better knock, I suppose. There doesn't seem to be anyone here. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness gracious, moi. <laughs> Gil, remember your English lessons. Uh, Mark. Turn of the Jedi, best Star Wars movie, by the way. De Lafayette, Forza, Fighter, Patriot Cars? Yeah, that. <laughs> I don't think they're going to let us in. And at first, they weren't. The Continental fight brought in a swarm of deadbeat French officers from Europe and the Caribbean, made worse by Silas Dean rubber stamping everyone he could find. A special committee had to be created to evaluate these French officers. He's from one of the most powerful families in France. That's got to account for something. Yeah, well, he's also got zero experience, and well, I have skid marks older than him. Tell me, boy, what's so special about you? Again, I'm rich. By eschewing any paycheck, well, time when Lafayette you need officially resources. became a major general in the Continental Army. He did have one condition, though. Tales of George Washington's leadership and bravery had already crossed the Atlantic, and he would only serve under the general. When Lafayette finally met Washington, he was completely hey. enamored. <laughs> <You're cool. laughs> we got Mr. Bean. Hold on. When he met we're, Washington, we're the he stuff. was completely enamored. We got some Mr. Bean Washington, and is that Martha Washington? What's your name, Major General? <laughs> uh, kid, you've been kicked in the head or something. Oh, so, so sorry, General Lovington. I am the Marquis de Washington. Good God, son. <laughs> Alex, take care of this guy, would you? Th that was General Washington. Oh, wow. And who are you? Who am I? Yo, I'm the bastard son from the Caribbean, but I'm the last to run when you hear the cannon. Fools slam, but they see me standing in my position. They be like, who was that? And I say, Alexander Hamilton. Oh! Dropping some Hamilton bars. Heck yeah. Um, dude, we're just getting more. They're bringing more and more aspects to Drawn of History. Now we got the musicals. Dude, it's never going to end. What the hell was that? Oh, that? 
That's my rap. I'm trying out this <laughs> thing where I just kind of rap everything. People yeah. love it. They do? Maybe. Oh, yeah. All these guys love it when I rap. Really? Let me ask you a question. Maybe, maybe do people don't. that normally like a rap like your raps? Uh, <laughs> don't worry about it. Very pleased to meet you. There was little time for pleasantries. A large detachment of British troops and ships under General William Howe had vanished from their stronghold in New York City and had just popped up in the Chesapeake Bay. Should we prepare to withstand the siege of Philadelphia? Yeah, with what supplies? We either stop them in their tracks or we abandon the city altogether. Our best shot's gonna be here at Brandywine Creek. That's where we make our stand. Let's go. Hey, what about Lafayette? Wait, his commission's real? I thought he was a make-a-wish kid or something. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, follow me, Major General, and try not to get yourself killed. On September 11th, 1777, the two sides met at Brandywine Creek. True to form, Washington's forces were soon surrounded by British regulars and their Hessian mercenaries. Yep. I thought you said the second column was just a diversion. We thought it was, but it turns out- As it turns out, we're about to be outflanked and those men are about to be torn to shreds. Lafayette saw his chance. General Washington, permission to join the fight. Approved, they need all the help they can get. Go. Oh, wait a minute, was that that French kid? Where Lafayette, the legend get begins. back here! But Lafayette was already gone, riding off to glory. He found the Continental forces scattered and afraid. Gentlemen, get yourselves together! Fix bayonets and prepare for the enemy! Across that field are those British dogs and their German stooges who would take everything you hold dear! Will you let them like, take your honor, your freedom, French, your lives? No! <laughs> our liberty! No! <laughs> yes! <laughs> No! Alex, what are you doing? Anubis? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying another new thing where I just, uh, I just yodel everything. Oh, God. Alex, if you want to be productive, why don't you Yo, watch Mr. another Bats. Drawing History video or like and comment on this one? You could always buy a Right Side of History shirt. The link's down in the description. Or you could support the channel by becoming a Patreon patron like these all-stars down Heck here. Yeah. Or I could just say everything using Tibetan throat singing. <sighs> I can do Where's it. Aaron Burr when you need him? <laughs> All right, another awesome installment drawn of history. Um, it's been great to hear about because I, I, I know about Lafayette, but mostly from the perspective of the impact on the war, but not as much about uh, the background of some of the um, smaller details. And so, yeah, this has been great. And Again, just more elements of drama history that are so brilliant. Um, we got a bunch of other videos from other things too. A lot of American history stuff, but a lot of some of the early stuff was uh, not necessarily American history. Like uh, you might have seen the thumbnail there that was about the Black Death, um, which is great too. So I'm looking forward though to part two um, to learn more about this uh, the, the, this, this man's life and and uh, the impact that it's going to have on the war. The, um, the French involvement in uh, the uh, American Revolution was paramount for for the united states um there are resources the united states just did not have and leadership and training that the americans never had because remember this is not even a country it's just a ragtag group of people that have been put together just uh fairly quickly um, to fight against the world's most powerful uh nation so yeah there's just not a victory without the french involvement so seeing some of the stories of that involvement i think are really important so you can be able to explain it and understand it a lot better anyway i'm excited to uh to continue on with this look out for part two whenever he releases that again original video link is down below as well as just a link some to some other stuff you can find on my my game cha gaming channel it's on youtube twitch discord server um got some other history merch if you're interested in just getting some history related stuff a lot of fun there anyways with that we'll see you next time bye